We, our software engineers, our friends and family think that we probably have the best job in the world. High salary, fancy offices, free food, food and more food, free gadgets, free home office if you will. It's free, it's free, it's freaking. We are also seen as someone who don't get Monday blues. Ones who totally love their work, which is certainly true for maybe a bunch of us, but all of this comes at a cost one has to pay a heavy toll, which is what this video is all about. Let's jump right into the worst parts of being a software engineer. Chapter 1. As a software engineer, keeping up with the latest technology can be a daunting task. The industry is constantly evolving, and if you're not careful, you can easily fall behind. Let's take web development as an example. A few years ago, HTML and CSS was the go-to combination for building web UIs. A few years after, JavaScript became the backbone of modern web development. And with the rise of frameworks like Angular and React, a lot of assumptions have been already challenged. Meanwhile, you win. The same is true for Android development. Java, XML, and async tasks were once the standard for building apps, but now we have Kotlin, Jetpack Compose, and Kotlin coroutines. And with libraries and architectures being introduced all the time, it's crucial to stay up to date. So why is keeping up with the latest tech so important? For one, it allows you to build better and more efficient software. But more importantly, it keeps you competitive in the job market. Employers want engineers who can hit the ground running and deliver results quickly. In short, as a software engineer, keeping up with the latest technology is an ongoing challenge. But with the right mindset and a commitment to lifelong learning, you can stay ahead of the curve and build amazing software. Well, before I proceed ahead, I would request you to hit the like button and share this video with your family and non-tech friends so that they get a glimpse of what it really feels to be a software engineer in the modern era. Chapter two, burnout is a common experience for software engineers. It's characterized by feelings of exhaustion, detachment, and a sense of ineffectiveness. According to a survey conducted by Blind, 60% of the tech workers experienced burnout in 2021. This is up from 45% in 2020. And as per recent study done by Haystack, 83% of developers suffered from burnout in 2021. We don't know which one is the correct one. Maybe we can take like an average. This can be caused by a number of factors, including daily pressure, hustle culture, on-call rotations, and high-stake projects. As an example, as a UI engineer, you may spend a week making a change to a button, aka centering a dev, only to have it rolled back shortly after. This kind of pressure can take a toll on your mental health, particularly when combined with the pressure of outside hustle culture. You may be bombarded with advice from so-called LinkedIn influencers to work on your day job, read 10 books a month, and work on a side hustle. As if you were living in a capitalist utopia. I recently came across such a post and I was like, dude, there's a thing called setting realistic goals. Just relax. On-call rotations can also contribute to burnout particularly when you're part of a small team and on call frequently. This can make it difficult to take a break or recharge. Finally, high stakes projects can also contribute to burnout, especially when you are asked to prioritize competing demands. You may be working on a critical project for your team only to be pulled away to handle a critical request from another team. You may be in a team with high and fragile stakes. Uh, as an example, I and a colleague of mine in my previous company were using some analytics library incorrectly, which costed our company around 25,000 US dollars, which was pretty much equal to our annual income back then. Thankfully, we were not fired. <laughs> Overall, it's important to take steps to avoid burnout, such as taking regular breaks, setting boundaries, and prioritizing self-care. This will help you stay motivated and productive over the long run. Chapter three. Imposter syndrome is a common experience among software engineers. It's the feeling that you're not good enough, despite evidence to the contrary. This can be caused by a number of factors, including competition before and after getting a software job, tough interview processes, or a competition from outside the job. Before getting a software job, there's a lot of competition. You are probably competing with hundreds, if not thousands of people for a single software job. Once you have landed the job, the competition doesn't stop. There's often a culture of overwork and constant improvement, which can make it difficult to feel like you are doing enough. This is compounded by the fact that there are always younger, more innovative individuals out there with new ideas and backing from incubators like Y Combinator. Tough interview processes can also contribute to imposter syndrome. For example, you may be asked to design a WhatsApp-like system in just 45 minutes to an hour, which can feel impossible. Imposter syndrome can also occur when working with some great colleagues who you perceive as more skilled or knowledgeable. 
eligible than yourself. It's important to recognize these feelings of imposter syndrome and work to move past them. Focusing on collaboration and learning from others can help combat these feelings of inadequacy. This may involve seeking like active support from colleagues or practicing self-compassion and focusing on your strengths rather than your perceived weaknesses. I mean, remember, you belong in your job, you crack the interview, right? And you have the skills to succeed. Chapter four, being a software engineer is a skill with infinite possibilities, but sometimes this can be overwhelming. You might know a lot of things, but you don't know what to build. Or you might know what to build, but there are so many things and you don't know what to learn or which one to choose from. Psychologists even have a term for this, mental shortcut. This can be uh, especially challenging when you are trying to switch jobs. You might have worked on a particular technology for a long time, uh, but now it's obsolete. You need to learn something new, but again, there's so much to choose from, which can leave you in a limbo. Chapter five, being a software engineer is more than just being good at writing code. You also need to be able to communicate effectively, manage your time effectively, and work well with others. Here are some tips for developing these skills. Practice your communication skills, both written and verbal. Make sure you can explain complex concepts in a clear and concise way, because most of the times you would be writing design docs. Or learn to manage your time effectively. This is essential for staying on the top of your work and meeting deadlines. There are many different time management techniques available, so find one that works for you. Develop your people skills. Software engineers often work in teams, so it's important to be able to collaborate effectively with others. Be a good listener and be willing to help out your colleagues. So, whatever problems we discussed today, there are multiple solutions possible. The best way to deal with this is to learn from others. Get a mentor either within your company or there are uh, actually many great online resources and communities where you can ask questions and get advice from other software engineers like LinkedIn, TeamBlind, Slack communities, JoinTaro, etc. Finally, remember that you are not alone. Everyone goes through this at some point. Just keep learning and growing and eventually you will find your way. And by the way, there are tons of great things about software engineering as well, which we will reserve for some other day, some other time. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.